I'm near the southern tip of mainland Japan. Kagoshima City has been on my radar for as long as I can remember, but though I've been to Kyushu before, this is my first time here. You don't have to be in town for long before you notice that. And I don't mean the boat. Sakurajima Island, a very active volcano. A lady in a shop said yesterday that we can expect a casual eruption soon. Now, I don't know what that means, and to be honest, I don't think I want to find out what that means, but I do acknowledge it will add a certain drama to the proceedings. Anyway, we are not here to talk about volcanology. We're here in Kyushu to talk about shochu. Now, if sake can lay claim to be Japan's national beverage, then shochu can definitely lay claim to being its national spirit. For those unfamiliar with sake, it's a brewed beverage made with fermented rice. Shochu, on the other hand, is a distilled spirit. Spirits can have a much higher potential alcohol so shochu falls into the same category as whiskey, vodka, and rum. Though there are many crossovers with these other spirits, shochu is a distinct and delightful beverage worthy of the attention of sommeliers, bartenders, and consumers the world over. Another thing to mention is that Korean soju and shochu are not the same thing. To keep things simple, Korean soju comes from Korea. Japanese shochu, Japan. Both are spirits, pronunciation is similar, but they really are very different beverages. Shochu can be made from many things. Rice, barley, sugar are some of the most common. But the thing we hear in Kagoshima will concentrate on what they do best. Imo shochu, sweet potato shochu. We are in what is known as Kagoshima Prefecture, but jump back 200 years when the area was run by samurai and would be in the Satsuma domain. The Satsuma lords were some of the most powerful in Japan. And to this day, many brands and places are linked to these guys. A Geographic Indicator, or GI, is a status granted by the WTO that allows a kind of protection from misuse or imitation. When you see certain words on a label, you have a guarantee that the contents have been produced to certain standards. Champagne, tequila, scotch, parmesan cheese are all examples. Considering the history and how unique the local Imo Shochu is, it was only natural when a GI was awarded to the area in 2005 it was named Satsuma GI. There are about 118 producers and it is 100% sweet potato. To qualify, all ingredients, including water, all production and storage, need to come from and occur in Kagoshima Prefecture. There are roughly 60 approved varieties of potato used in Imo Shochu, but potatoes aren't native to the area. Originating from southern Peru and northwestern Bolivia, it was through the Ryukyu Kingdom, what is now known as Okinawa. Potatoes arrived in 1705, brought in by a sailor called Riemon. Riemon planted seeds and shared them with his neighbors, and potatoes began to thrive in the area. In the 1730s, there was a large crop failure, but the potato field survived, and the area where they were planted avoided a massive famine. He didn't have a family name, but after his death, in recognition of his contribution, he was given the name Maeda Riemon. Potato became so associated with the region, it became known as the Satsuma potato. Kagoshima that's good to hear. Everybody should be drinking more shochu. ありがとうございます。ぜひそうあってほしいです。上流酒ということでウイスキーなんかも上流酒がありますけど。
now seems like a good time to bring up Honkaku. Honkaku translates along the lines of genuine, original, the real deal. There are no permitted additives in Honkaku shochu. And unlike the mass-produced continuous distillation method that can be used to produce generic spirits with little to no character, Honkaku shochu is pot distilled. With exceptions so rare they prove the rule, it is single distilled. Single distillation is very relevant. Multiple passes through the still inevitably strips flavors. Because Honkaku shochu is single distilled, it retains the rich flavors and aromas of the original ingredients. Now that these beauties are out of the ground, they need to get to the distillery as quickly as possible. Following the winding road up to our next destination, the distillery leaps out at you like something out of Gotham. Here at the well-respected Kokobu Distillery, Representative Director Sasayama Mamoru has kindly taken time out of his day to give me a tour. In an area that sounds like a DJ at a jungle rave, the harvest is cleaned and washed before moving on to the next room. Here it sounds more like an industrial metal concert, while the team tidy things up. この諸見の中にはあの、もう薩摩マサリという芋だけで、はい、作ってます。で、あの、国部酒造ではこの薩摩マサリとあと鶴なし源氏、このあの二つの品種の芋を使って芋焼酎作ってます。スマウスグレイ
There is such an obvious wealth of knowledge, and I'm hoping to share a glass or two with him sometime in the near future. After distillation is complete, the newly created shochu is stored and matured. When it's good to go, some last minute checks and the end product can make its way to happy customers. So, I've just arrived here at Koriyama Hachiman Jinja. Now, the film crew, they don't actually arrive until tomorrow, but we've been given an opportunity to be shown around here, and it's an opportunity too good to miss. So, because uh, there's a story that I really, really wanted you to know. People come here to pray for various things, success at business, uh, passing exams, that kind of thing. But the shrine also has another claim to fame. In the late 16th century, uh, there was a, shall we say, less than flattering review of the hospitality of the, of the head priest. And that review also doubles as the oldest written reference to shochu in the country. It's not just the Japanese gods that enjoy a good session. Uh, the priests definitely get in on the fun as well. In 1954, repair workers here at the shrine were uh, surprised to discover a message left to them by fellow carpenters in 1559. And those carpenters weren't happy. At the end of a hard day's work, said carpenters were so incensed the priest didn't share any of his stash of shochu with them, they felt compelled to record their outrage. The temple master is very stingy. Us carpenters not given a single drop of shochu. What an annoying situation. And that is the oldest representation of the word shochu in the Japanese language. Though this passive-aggressive complaint didn't land them a drink, it wasn't completely in vain. Their handiwork is recognized as a designated, important cultural property of Japan. It took nearly 400 years to uncover the complaint, which suggests at least two things. One, these ghosts can be proud of their work. It was close to four centuries before repairs were necessary. And two, they were too indirect in their feedback. It is very common practice to leave an offering of shochu out for the gods at any shrine or temple. Keeping an eye on Sakurajima, just to make sure there's no need for any eruption-related changes of plans, I move from a fairly large team to what is practically the one-man band of Nakamura Shinya. Here we can learn about the wonderful world of Koji. One of the things sake and shochu production have in common is the use of kojikin, which is a type of mold. Mold might sound a bit weird to some people, but think of it like this. Without it we wouldn't have soy sauce, cheese, and we wouldn't have this beautiful beverage that is shochu. Put simply, alcoholic fermentation requires sugars and yeast. Grapes and other fruits contain naturally occurring sugars, and yeast strains exist practically everywhere. Potato, even the sweetest potato, contains starch, which the yeasts can't metabolize, so this starch needs to be broken down into fermentable sugars before alcoholic fermentation can begin. This is where koji comes in. It breaks the starch in the sweet potato down into sugar. Making koji is a multi-day process of hot, hard work. But once it's ready, it is transferred to tanks where yeast and water are added. For the next eight to 10 days, the yeast multiplies, processing the sugars the koji creates, until there are so many yeast cells, it's time to introduce them to their new friend, sweet potato. So does this soil, does, does it come from Sakurajima, the volcano? Hanbun. Hanbun, really? <laughs> so the potatoes going from here, they get washed in here. Okay. So this is, this is where the potatoes are getting steamed, okay. And how long does it take to steam the potatoes? Ah, okay. Mm. これが
入れていって、買い入れをするという流れになります。さつまいもの香りですねそうそうそう、はい、これが主語にさつまいもが加わって今酵母が要はさつまいもを食べて思いっきり発酵してるっていうところですねもう鹿児島の桜島のマグマがボコボコなってるような大きな発酵になります<笑>さあ今 The reference to magma isn't too far from the truth As the yeast does its business things can get pretty hectic That's pretty amazing. I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah, it feels a little dangerous. When I was small, I was scared. I'm not surprised. <laughs> wow. Thank you for showing us that. That was, that was very unexpected. If you get angry, you'll get angry. You're a bad child. I'm angry. Like I mentioned before, unlike mass-produced spirits made through the continuous distillation technique, Honkaku is exclusively made in a pot still with a single distillation. I asked Nakamura-san what makes this one-shot method so special. Honkaku shochu is a single shot of one-shot. Therefore, for that, the wine is made from the wine, 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 その味わいをダイナミックに出すっていうところが本格焼酎の一番の魅力だと思ってます。So obviously we're getting some secret access here because that otherwise it wouldn't be locked down。これが今焼酎が初めて生まれてくる瞬間です。Though Nakamura-san makes his own koji, this is by no means standard across the industry. I asked him to explain, considering how busy he already is, why he chooses to hand make his koji on site. 焼酎作りにおいて僕は麹作りが一番大事だと思っているんですねそれは何でかって言ったら例えば日本酒でもそうですし日本のいわゆる醸造発酵において麹作りっていうのは基礎であり一番極意でもある一番大事なものなんですねなので芋焼酎を作っているんですけどその元になっているのは米麹でその米麹をやっぱり丁寧に作っていくっていうことが味わいの中のやっぱり滑らかさ、柔らかさ、優しさっていう部分、そのテクスチャーの部分を非常に重要な部分になるので、その麹の作り方をやっぱりおろそかにしてはいけないなっていうふうに自分は思ってます。昔は当たり前だったんですね。でもそれがやっぱり機械化が進むにつれて、みんなどんどんやっぱり簡略化、機械化っていうふうに流れていった。でも自分たちはやっぱりこの麹、っていうものを昔ながらの手作りでやっていくっていうことが結果的に麹にとって一番いい、えー、味わいであったり発酵であったりっていうところに役立つと自分たちは理解しています。What is your favorite part about working making shochu? 鹿児島の中であの晩酌つまりお酒を飲むということを誰やめとか誰やみっていう言い方をするんですね。これは「誰」っていうのは「疲れる」っていうことで「やめる」っていうのは「えー、止める」っていうことつまり「疲れを癒すすそれが焼酎を飲むとということなんですねこれが鹿児島の文化であってお酒を飲んで一日の疲れを癒すそして一緒に飲んで笑い飛ばすそういう力っていうのがお酒にあると思っているんですねでそれがやっぱり焼酎の文化であり魅力であり一番の楽しみ方だと思ってます。It is such an honor to meet the passionate people who produce the things we often take for granted. One of the things I truly love about my job is the privilege to tell the stories of these craftsmen and women to my guests. Now, time to get back to Kagoshima City for the next piece of the Imo Shochu puzzle. We've spent a little bit of time learning what Shochu is made from. We've spent a little bit of time learning how it's made. To be honest, that's only part of the fun. There's, uh, there's a little bit of enjoyment to be had from drinking it too. So to do a little bit more research, we've come to a bar, Waso. This is Makurazaki of Satsuma Shudo, the Kuro Shiranami of the Shinshu. It's a new one for the Shinshu. Straight away, you can tell what it's made from. So that single distillation is just is just so obvious. It, it's clearly sweet potato that we've got here. 
the, the depth and the width on your palette, it's, this, is, this is beautiful. So second up, we've got shochu on the rocks, which is what I would tend to order when I'm drinking shochu. Uh, so please tell me about this one. え、これは私の焼酎のthere is none of that super high alcohol burn that you might associate with straight spirits. This is this is the, a delicious place to start. Excellent choice. えっと、私が大好きなあの、焼き芋焼酎なんですけど、あの、焼くことによって And again, the, the single distillation, this is obviously sweet potato. There's, there's, no, there's no ambiguity there. This is, this is an, again, an, another delicious product. これはオレンジ芋っていう香りの高いお芋でさつまいもで作った焼酎ですお花とかオレンジみたいな香りがしますそれを炭酸で割ってまたこう yeah, you can you can really notice that it, orange zest is the first thing that you pick up when you when you smell it, and but it does it does still have that potato aspect. It's a very very uh, fascinating nose. And it's very easy to see why this is popular style of of, uh, of drinking shochu, especially on a hot summer day. The the effervescence is kind of lifting up the aromas, and yeah, there's almost notes of peach as well. This is uh, it's amazing that this is something that basically just comes from potatoes mixed with koji. Fascinating. And to finish off, we've got an immaculately poured hot water. And shochu. This is actually the most popular style, the most popular way of drinking shochu. And it might sound a little bit strange, especially in a town that gets pretty hot in summer. But hot water and shochu is is a fascinating way to drink as well. So please explain. これはですね、もう僕たちスタッフであの仕事終わりに誰やめって言ってあのお疲れ様って言ってる時にみんなが大好きな一番好きな焼酎。で、みんなでお祝いで飲む時に一番美味しいのがこれです。Whether it's the heat or the specific shochu, I'm not sure, but it is so wide and mouth-filling. The texture is, it's, it's, it's a beautiful oily texture. And it, it's, it's almost like if you, were, if you were drinking custard made out of potato, I don't know, there's maybe not the best description, but that, again, it, it's amazing that you can get so many different characteristics and flavors from, from the ingredients and how the different ways that they are served, the different techniques and, and even, I'd say, glassware, it, it, it has a massive impact on the way that these things taste. But this, again, it's pretty, pretty dangerous, I suspect, and, a, and a, I can drink a lot of this for a long time. In all honesty, it's hard for me to think of a beverage that has this much diversity in the way that it's served and, and the kind of breadth of different flavors that come out from those serving styles. One of the things I'd like to know is um, from Tori-san is what is, what makes Satsuma Imo so, uh, Imoshu so important for him? Kagoshima is a country in this があるで、それぞれの地域ごとにいろんな面白い当事さん、ま、焼酎メーカー、作り手さんたちがいて、みんなが自分の作りたいものを一生懸命作ってます。で、それぞれに100全部味が違って、香りも違って、え、それがね、
詰めててもあの美味しい焼酎って瓶の中でどんどん熟成して美味しくなるんですよ、うん、その変化もすごく楽しくてでその焼酎この一杯で今日はお友達になれるそうそうそう焼酎は最強のコミュニケーションツールでもあるんで,で鹿児島の人はみんな焼酎片手にお疲れ様って言いながら仲良くああでもないこうでもないっていろんなことを楽しくあの喋って飲んでまた明日頑張ろうというふうになれるそれのが焼酎なんで。乾杯しましょう。乾杯。じゃあ鹿児島弁で乾杯はおやっとさって言います。おやっとさ。おやっとさ。おやっとさ。おやっとさ。さ Now that I know more, it's obvious our carpenter friends deserved a glass of shochu. You can only imagine their disappointment when they saw something they felt they'd earned poured down another man's throat. One of the things that's really come through here on this trip down to Kagoshima is how much Imo Shochu is embedded into the culture and the community, how much it brings people together. And that wasn't really the, the gist of the story that I told you about last time I was here. We know the deities like a tipple, so hopefully we can please some gods and ghosts at the same time. And who knows, maybe those ancient woodworkers might even share a splash with the head priest. Shochu's versatility makes it practically unique in the spirit world for its ability to match with food. With that in mind, it's time to say goodbye to the good people of Kagoshima Prefecture and head to one of the culinary capitals of the world, Tokyo. For dinner, I'm joined by my friend Bob, a whiskey master and a knight of the quake. Also, award-winning chef Trevor Blythe, without doubt one of the best chefs in the city, has taken up the challenge to prepare perfect matches for this captivating beverage. You're a whiskey guy? Yeah. You're going to love this stuff. Well, there's definitely sweet potatoes in that. Wow. And the reason why it's so clearly and obviously sweet potato is because it's only been distilled once. I mean, myself, just coming from a whiskey background, this reminds me of the low wines, the first distillation when we have it, but for barley. And it gets a lot of the barley character, but I can, t I can, I feel like I'm tasting sweet potato in here as well. Yeah. This is it's eye opening for me. It tastes very familiar, but something kind of different. So the tartness from the ume is coming out great. God, that's good. Mm. Oh, wow. So, Hong Kaku Shochu with a splash of water. Excellent. Oh, wow. Should really open it up. Just like a good single malt? It's atmospheric distilled, so we kind of get those heavier kind of aromas. Are you, are you getting smoke? Are we getting a little bit of smoke? I could smell this all day. I could maybe drink it all day too. I think I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's an excellent match. It's quite cleansing, mm -hmm. it's not overpowering. The finish for this just lasts forever. So this one's neat and it needs to be neat. I know nothing about shochu yet, but I, I know a lot about whiskey. And this is kind of on par for something that I would age in oak for 10 years. There's the different layers of flavors here, and the layers of flavors in this exquisite tart. Wow. This is neat, right? Yeah. So it's coming in at pretty much 26%. The alcohol is coming through the oil. So when, when koji is doing its thing, it brings out umami. The koji matching with the umami from the cheese and the mushrooms, it's just a, it's a, bit, it's a bit of a slam dunk, so no wonder it tastes so good. Here. The aroma is a lot lighter. So this one has actually been vacuum distilled. Okay. So you can kind of expect those sort of lighter, more floral kind of characters coming through. It's a lot more nuanced than some of the ones that we've had before. This is a lot different from any fish and chips that I've ever seen. <laughs> it cuts through some of the some of the oils from the fish as well. Honkaku imo shochu with hot water, hoyu wari. Ooh. Okay, so that heat, it's going to cut through the oil. It cleanses your palate so that it's almost like the next bite is like the first bite. 
I mean, there's, there's not a lot of spirits that you can do things like this. This meal really highlights like the, the different possibilities with Honka Kushochu. We've, we've had it in multiple different ways. We haven't even talked about cocktails or anything like that, right? So like, I, I don't know, I, I, can't, I can't think of another spirit that you could, maybe has this level, level of versatility. I might be a little bit biased, you know, as a, as a whiskey guy, <laughs> whiskey of course. Guy, you know, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, the, I'm almost now a, a convert of, you know, the world of shochu. And, you know, I want to talk to my friends and, you know, in the whiskey world and like, hey, you might want to check this out check too. This out. Yeah. It's been good to catch up. Yeah. It's been an amazing journey learning about this fascinating beverage. And I've developed a greater appreciation for Honkaku Imo Shochu. But it's not just that. It's been fun. The history, the food, drinks, and the friends I've made along the way. I've learned so much. But what sticks with me the most is how closely intertwined Honka Kushochu is with the culture of Southern Kyushu. How relevant it is to the community as a whole, from the farmers, to the distillers, to the people who serve it and those who savour it. And let's not forget the outraged ghosts of carpenters and, allegedly, tight-fisted bosses. In a way, Shochu has transcended alcohol to have become as much a part of the region as that massive volcano everyone seems so cool with as a noisy neighbour. If you see Honkaku Imo Shochu on a menu, give it a try. You won't be disappointed. Until next time.